All right, I think we're ready to get started here. Um, so I'm just going to start going. Um, if you can't hear me, please, uh, please let me know in the chat um, and I can figure out what's going wrong and we can get um, that sorted out. But for now, I'm going to assume that everyone can hear me um, and we can get started here. Um, so my name is Newton Picconi. Um, I've been a product manager at IBM for the past five years, um, working in the integration space. Um, working with uh, our um, our API management development teams, uh, build and bring, pro bring products to market. Um, thanks for joining me today for my session. Um, I have some exciting stuff to go through with you in the realm of managed events and um, multi endpoint management and Kafka and API Connect and lots of cool stuff we'll get into. Um, and I'm going to be they kind of seem slightly unrelated, like API management and Kafka events and, and things like that. But I'm hoping that by the end of the session here, um, that we will uh, have a good understanding of the, the the shift that we're seeing in the market, um, and just kind of want to talk through where we see this uh, this API management um, and this uh, events markets kind of colliding and coming together, and that sweet spot in the middle. IBM's kind of taking some actions to address these, these needs that we're seeing. Um, so to introduce things, uh, as I said, we'll be exploring some Kafka technology um, and IBM's API management tool, um, and just kind of using those to set the stage for the new thing, uh, this new thing that we are calling uh, multi-endpoint uh, management. So multi-endpoint management, imagine a world um, where you can manage Kafka topics, um, REST APIs, SOAP APIs, GraphQL APIs, um, all in the same place as if they were all APIs. So we all know API management platforms and we know the power that they have in the complete lifecycle management um, and the security components to it um, and the socialization and kind of the developer community we build with APIs. And uh, what we're imagining here is expanding that um, beyond just APIs into uh, additional um, types of endpoints, including Kafka topics. So um, to start off here, uh, I want to start with the basics. So what is Kafka in two minutes? Um, so I'm not going to go in very in-depth, just go at a high level and then talk about some value um, just to set the stage for um, what we're talking about multi-endpoint management here. Um, so Kafka, it's not your typical messaging protocol, um, and it's not meant to be used for the same request response patterns that APIs are meant for. Um, it's more of an Apache streaming project that is uh, mostly used for taking data from one topic and then processing it in some ways in multiple different ways uh, and then passing it on to the next step um, in the assembly line. And it's more of a, a flow rather than the traditional assemblies that we see with APIs, um, where the data comes in, the data goes out. Um, and it's kind of uh, one directional. Things keep going in one direction, and it's not the same like back and forth request response we see with APIs. So topics are like pads um, in the API, in the REST API world. Um, consumers are the listeners for the, the data stream that's coming off of these um, topics. And producers are what is actually generating and sending out that data. Um, so you can imagine the look. So you can basically um, you can change the load of your system just by adding or removing consumers at any time. And no matter how many consumers you add or or, um, or uh, take away, remove, uh, the system will automatically rebalance itself, and it's kind of constantly doing that. Um, as you can kind of see in this anatomy um, image that I have on the slide. Um, so just a quick intro there. There's a little more information on the slide here, um, but there's a whole lot more to Kafka, as you can imagine, um, and these event-driven architectures that, that um, I'm introducing with Kafka um, that I can honestly spend a whole hour session just going through that. Um, but I just want to give a high-level intro now um, just to give a, a, an idea of the, the direction the market's moving. And specifically, I want to kind of touch on some of the value um, that we see with uh, these event-driven architectures and Kafka um, from a customer perspective. Um, so now that you have that basic understanding that I went through under two minutes, um, let me go over the kind of value of these architectures. Um, and just to start, it's all about uh, getting data where it needs to go. 
And in this case, it's more about, uh, it's not necessarily about doing that as fast as possible. So you get a request in, um, understand the request and send data back to um, the, the requester as fast as possible. Um, it's more about uh, getting the data to its destination, maybe even before the application even knows that it needs that data. Um, and having that one directional, like here's the data, do with it as you please kind of thing. Um, and what this really does is it, it, it enables uh, a bunch of different things. So it enables real-time response to events as they're happening. Um, it helps improve customer experience um, in this world of ever modernizing um, application development that we see uh, at companies and in, across industries. Um, and it's really the, the, the gateway to bringing in, in real-time intelligence to your applications um, and starting to bring in some of the cool automation um, and AI um, stuff that's happening. Um, in, in the world right now. It's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good place to start with that, um, of getting data where it needs to be. So one thing to remember from this slide, um, event-driven applications, they essentially require new tools um, and a different approach for building them uh, from what we see with APIs today. Um, and that's really what, we're, uh, what, we've, what we've found um, in the research we've been doing, been doing and the conversations we've been having with customers I'm for uh, regular API days uh, attendees. You've probably heard of IBM's API Connect offering, um, which is our API management, our industry leading API management platform. Um, we have we, we cover use cases uh, in just about every industry, and with this explosion of digital applications and APIs that we've seen in the past decades, um, API Connect and IBM really um, hopped on the market waves that were being made there. Um, and got in early to enable um, these digital revolutions um, that are happening um, in, in different industries and different organizations um, with our kind of complete and intuitive API lifecycle functionalities. So the ability to create, secure, manage, test, monitor, um, monetize, socialize, um, the, the whole uh, lifecycle of APIs, um, being able to do that all within API Connect. Um, so uh, like I was saying, being able to create and securely expose those APIs, and while you're doing that, testing them and iterating fast um, for developers, um, being able to uh, manage those APIs as a product manager, an architect or somebody, or, or a development team lead, um, and put high level and more in detail, granular level of management on those APIs. Um, and then also uh, with our developer portal, being able to socialize those APIs, um, both internally and externally, um, across clouds and on a branded kind of white uh, white labeled um, portal site that we create and allow you to um, customize to the arts content. Um, and now um, what we're seeing is a need for the same level of functionality that we've seen um, for for the past uh, the, the past uh, years that we've seen with APIs and we're seeing this functionality um, needed um, in in um, in the same level uh, for new endpoint types. So beyond just REST APIs, beyond just SOAP APIs, which we've seen in the markets for a while now, um, and um, kind of following that trend, just with our latest version of API Connect, um, we have uh, released the ability to um, kind of do the whole life cycle of GraphQL endpoints. Um, and we have that support in our latest version, but um, Again, I just want to give a high level, similar to what I did with Kafka for the API management technology that's out there, not a sales pitch for API Connect or at all a deep dive into the API Connect offering. Um, just a quick high level, introducing API Connect, introducing Kafka, um, and the values that they both provide to then start looking at that um, overlap in the Venn diagram of where we see these two coming together um, and, and the needs we see in the market for addressing things like that. Um, so real quick on the value and key use cases when it comes to API management. Um, as I mentioned before, APIs are everywhere. Uh, most modernization and digitalization initiatives in industries, across industries, are led with APIs and an API strategy. Um, some of the key use cases that we see are now expanding beyond just RESTful APIs and relying more and more on these event-driven architectures and event services like Kafka. Um, so 
you'll see a lot of parallels from the key use cases and values that uh, we can provide with API Connect to what I was showing you before um, with the Kafka use cases. Um, and that's not just coincidence. That's that's the the, the kind of uh, the crux of the presentation that I'm giving here. Um, so things like speeding up application development um, and uh, the ability to securely expose data and from coming from systems or records um, and getting data where it needs to go fast and sometimes before applications even know they need it. Um, the socialization aspect that I, that I talked about, not only applying to APIs, but also internal and external use cases for socializing Kafka, uh, Kafka topics um, and being able to put a, a, a decent amount of management on top of those Kafka topics, similar to what we do with APIs today, so that we can securely socialize those um, and have the kind of security backbone that is expected around um, endpoints being shared both internally and externally. Um, and the last one I have here is just uh, enabling new business channels. So when you start uh, exposing things um, externally uh, outside of your DMZ, uh, it poses um, new business opportunity to start monetizing and charging for these endpoints and subscriptions to these endpoints to um, allow um, others uh, in other developers in your industry or across industries to um, come and pay to subscribe to your APIs, to your events, um, to kind of uh, Um, like, uh, like I was saying before, it's, it's really a lot of parallels here to, uh, between the use cases that we support with API management and with Kafka. And what we're really looking to do is um, bring what we have from API management to the Kafka space and these event-driven architectures to make, um, to make uh, what we're calling um, multi-endpoint management. Um, so SOAP and REST API, the two on the right here, uh, I'm sorry, the two on the left here are things that we've seen um, in the market for uh, a while now. Um, as I mentioned, GraphQL is a new thing that we have, um, that we've introduced recently, and async API is this new thing. Um, so, I, I mean, this is a list today. I think in the next few years, we're only going to see this list grow as more and more technologies need the same lifecycle management that we provide with APIs today. Um, so, um, like I was saying, REST and SOAP APIs have been in the, in the industry for a while, and they're still growing. I mean, there are still new industries coming and doing API initiatives and digitalizations, um, and there are other ones that are just kind of expanding more and more, like financial services and banks with all the kind of compliances that are out there and uh, data security things out there. Um, and as I mentioned, just last year, we began to see the introduction of the GraphQL use case um, with API Connect. Um, and now we're seeing similar trends moving towards events. So that's what we're looking here to do, is looking to support um, async API as well. So you might be asking, well, what's the relationship between Kafka, which you were talking about before, and now you're introducing this async API thing. Uh, so what's the connection here? What's the relationship between these two? Um, and I, I have a, a simple analogy that I give um, that kind of helps me wrap my head around the, uh, the comparison here. So um, async API is to Kafka as open API is to REST APIs. Um, so async API is a specification um, that allows developers, uh, architects, and product managers to define interfaces for an async API um, to enable the management of the Kafka topics. So really, to get to this multi-endpoint management, we need some way to define the interface of Kafka topics. And um, the open source community at, at, um, at OpenAPI, they kind of modified the OpenAPI 3 spec um, to support uh, Kafka and other event-driven um, technologies in the space. Um, so the goal of this open source spec is to make working with event-driven architectures as easy as it is to work with REST APIs today. And that's what they did. Um, and that goes from documenting the APIs to code generation with SDKs, um, from like, discovery of those um, API specs to like the management of the events. Um, and in the world of multi-cloud, uh, I'm sorry, in the world of multi-endpoint management, um, you can think of async API as synonymous to Swagger specs that we've been seeing um, in the past. So um, now um, I want to kind of just go through 
uh, talking about how APIs and events position themselves uh, in this world of multi endpoint management. So we understand that uh, we understand that the kind of markets are starting to merge together. We understand what the Kafka event technologies. We understand what the API connects API management technology is and the use cases and business values to both of them. Um, we understand async API and how that's the spec for making management possible. Um, and now just talking at a high level of, okay, so how would I want to use APIs? How would I want to use events? Um, and this visual I have here um, is really helpful in doing that. Um, so what, what I kind of do is categorize them into kind of three different types of requests. Um, and then based on these three different types of requests that we see, um, saying which one APIs do best, which one events do best, and then um, which one can be interchangeably done between, um, between both of them. So I'll start with the request action, the one at the top there. Um, request action from the start, it's something that APIs do really well, better than anything else. Um, request action means asking for something to happen. So one system asking or an end user asking another system or another end user to do something. Um, so for example, like when you go to a, a retail um, online marketplace and you place an order, um, or in your, your banking mobile app when you transfer money from one account to another, um, that's a request action. You're requesting the backend system to move X amount of money from one account to next account. When it's finished, you get the response of saying that or some, some little way. So that request response is something that works uh, very well and APIs do it uh, perfectly. Next, I'll skip to the bottom one just to show the, the two contrasting um, end, uh, like end use cases here um, to notifications. And notifications, on the other hand, as you can guess, um, are something that events do very, very well. Um, notifications means um, telling, uh, telling when something has happened. Um, so for example, when a new order has been placed um, or when items have been delivered um, or uh, another example I, I like to use is in airlines, um, in a mobile app in an airline, when a flight's been delayed, um, when that, that flight status changes from on time to delayed, that triggers an action for a notification to be sent to all the listeners of that Kafka um, topic um, to say this flight status has changed to delayed and then give some metadata uh, based on what that means. Um, and I mean, that I'll get into the use case more, but that goes to more than just end users waiting in the terminals. Um, it's it's a, a, an underpinning of the entire logistical, um, the log logistical supply chain of airlines and airports. Um, so something that APIs don't do it really well, because it's very taxing on the system to regularly be sending a request waiting for a response and when maybe it will never come for something like uh, uh, a flight being delayed. Um, and then the last one I'll talk about here real quick is the um, request state. So request state is something, it's different than the other two, and it's something that can be done by both APIs and events. Um, requesting a state is really essentially um, finding out about something. So asking about the state of a system, a application, data, whatever it might be. Um, so for example, um, where is my order, um, giving a customer's address, um, or like what's my account balance, or um, like things like that. You're requesting the state of um, something at rest. Um, so the real takeaway that I want you to take from this slide is that um, APIs are well suited for the request action or the request state. Um, events offer an alternative way to, distrib uh, to distribute state, um, for example, by capturing a change of events from a backend data store. Um, and then subscribers can build their own like local data cache um, for that data to store it. And then the application just can just hit that local cache um, for like those things like the um, where's my order or what's my account balance. It's, it's cached locally from what the the uh, the, the Kafka topic has has, has um, input to its listener. Um, and then notifications are ideally done for um, events because you want to drive some business logic when, event ha when an event happens and you don't want to have to keep pulling that back end system because like I said before, that becomes extremely taxing. So APIs and events, they 100% need to exist together um, in the market to kind of serve all of the use cases that we'd like to serve 
um, that, that customers are, are looking to um, support here. So um, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna kind of run through a quick scenario of how we see customers doing um, integration uh, patterns similar to this um, to support that managed events use case today. Um, and the real reason I wanna show this is because I want, it, I, I want it to be very clear and highlight where the pain points are in the way things work, like in the way things have to work today um, so that uh, it, it really kind of drives home why we need, uh, why the market is really demanding these, these new changes um, in, this, in, this, um, in this area. So customer uh, scenarios like this are really our bread and butter, and it's really how we um, drive these new ideas um, and how we address these emerging market needs um, by looking at uh, people are trying to do it today with existing technology and, and where it falls short and what we can do with our um, technologies to improve them to better suit this case. Um, so an example I like to use, I've used it a couple times already, is an airline. Um, it, it, at least for my head, it makes things very clear. There, it, it's, um, it shows the business criticalness of uh, like data getting to where it needs to go in different fashions, both request and response and also, um, also event-driven um, patterns. So as you can imagine, there's a whole lot of data flowing when it comes to an airline. to journal runs and locations, um, flight times, passenger manifests, passenger metadata, and, um, personal data from the passengers, and all a huge wide gamut of different types, um, different uh, sensitivities of data and everything. Um, and this data, it needs to be passed from one system to the next. So the luggage transportation team needs to know when passengers are, are checked in, if they don't check in, um, what flights they're on, what time their flights are leaving, um, what terminal their airplanes parked in and where to bring that luggage to, um, and, and so much more. But it's all reliant on this data getting to where it needs to be. And the same for the gas transportation team. Um, or uh, another uh, another team, which is the um, food transportation team. So in this case, um, what we're seeing here is uh, we already have integrations for the gas transportation team, and they're getting their data from this flight info creator database. Um, we have a, an integration built for the luggage transportation team, and they're getting that data they need with some messaging technology from that uh, backend database. And there's a mobile app um, for flight discovery um, that's getting has a similar integration to all these other systems. And what they're looking to do in this case is for the food transportation team, um, who is seen as a consumer of this data, to set up a similar messaging um, integration from that same backend data store. Um, and essentially, the way it works today is they have to set up more technology. Um, they have to set up a new set of technology, um, both on the food transportation side and on the data center side. Um, and then they have to set up that connection between those two. Um, and they have to do that for every team that they want to scale and create this connection to. Um, there's, uh, there's really, um, it's, it's unfortunate that this is the way that it works today um, and that uh, airline teams need to build these new stacks and, and uh, on both sides of the database. But, um, so yeah, like I was saying, the new technology on the data center side and on the um, food transportation side, and before they can have a similar architecture to what I was describing with Kafka, um, every new consumer who wants to listen to this data stream um, from the flight database, they need to set up these, these integration stacks like I was just kind of walked through here that have been created in all these places. Um, so. Just, I, I, I wanna take a few minutes here and just kind of walk through specifically what the pain points were there. I'm sure you kind of heard them um, as well as kind of walking through the scenario, but just to spell them out very clearly and exactly here. Um, the first pain point is the speed that it actually takes these teams to create these new integration stacks. Um, as you can imagine, it's not simply clicking a few buttons in a UI or running a few commands with, uh, with like automation scripts. Um, it involves uh, like networking teams setting up networks and infrastructure teams spinning up infrastructure and operations teams setting up and maintaining new integrations. Um, so that really slows down speed, that slows down scalability, 
um, and it, it makes for um, kind of the integration process to be slow and a little frustrating. The second pain point here is the technology that they have to use. So as I described, there's, uh, there's technology that exists today that does this interaction much better than what this, uh, this airline um, in this scenario is set up. And they could use like open source Kafka or something. But the problem with going to use a new, uh, like with a, with a new um, technology is one, you need a team to learn that technology and you need a team to learn how to um, operate it and maintain it. Um, not to mention the fact that there are probably functional gaps in the technology as it is today that won't allow it to fit your use case as you need it to. So there's this extra layer um, to be part of this integration suite to be suitable to enterprises like scenarios like this airline. Um, not to mention just the tech fatigue that comes with having a bunch of different technologies all managed in different ways and operate in different ways that you then need to have um, like subject matter experts and, and technical experts, experts to know how they work and to be able to operate them. Um, so, um, it, it really kind of, uh, that tech fatigue is, is, an, is a big pain point there. Next, I, I, I touched on the operations team that need to maintain all these stacks and integrations. And the more, develop, the, the more tools that developers uh, rely on, the larger the operational um, overhead becomes. And the last one I want to touch on here is, is one that's, uh, that's, that's interesting and, and really um, uh, a big one that I see. Internal social resources. So this picture really tells it all. In organizations, there are many teams all trying to accomplish their own business goals, and sometimes, and sometimes the problems that one team solves with a piece of technology can be um, related and reused with another team. Um, and we really need to, as like a, a integration service provider at IBM, we need to enable and encourage this type of behavior within organizations. Um, and by having a catalog or a portal, like we see with APIs, where organizations can um, socialize and share all of their APIs and events in one place um, and other endpoint types, um, even beyond just APIs and events with other internal teams. So anyone in their organization can come discover, try and subscribe to these new technologies that, um, that are solving these, pro these their problems. And a big piece of that discovery is knowing what it does and how it can help them too. Um, not to mention the, the new business opportunities and the routes to market that this opens up when you're able to not only share this ex, uh, internally, but also when you're looking to uh, share it externally and actually monetize and make some money off of these, uh, these um, pieces of technology that you create to solve your own business problems. So um, from those pain points uh, that we've gathered from talking with customers, from listening to the market and doing some research, um, what we have been able to do is define like what's next for Kafka, and that what next is multi endpoint management. Um, closing that Venn diagram and and kind of nailing that that overlap region um, of API management and event streams, um, and specifically in this case, it's the managed event streams and adding events to um, our management suite. And um, essentially, we want to deliver on the needs of both. Uh, of both kind of the left side of this, the wider distribution of events, and the complete lifecycle management of events on the right side. Um, and this can be provided by simply treating events and uh, treating events and bringing them into the same tools um, that we use to manage APIs and, and what we're doing with APIs today. So to finish out my presentation for today before I open it up for uh, Q&A, um, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk uh, more specifically about um, what we're planning, um, given where the market is going, kind of everything I've talked about so far to get us to this point. So yes, we know um, there, there are these kind of this merging of two technologies. We know it's a business need that customers are trying to solve today and can use some help um, doing it in a more elegant way. Um, so what's next? What's IBM doing about that? Um, and it's, it's simple. We want to think of Kafka topics in the same way that we think about APIs. Um, the concept is, is that um, we allow an organization to govern and socialize other endpoints in the same way that they do APIs today. Um, so consider my favorite uh, example, <laughs> um, an airline that I was talking about before um, in, in, our, in the, the scenario of how it's done today. Um, we saw that they had a mobile app there. So let's say that they're trying to improve that digital experience for their customers. Um, 
We talked about all the data flowing for managing the logistics of the airline, but let's look specifically at that um, mobile application um, for a second and look at um, uh, like what they need essentially to build it or improve it if it's already built. So the airline, their developers, they're not only gonna need to be concerned about how to build, let's say a check-in function, which will be a, a, a typical kind of request response um, interaction. So um, essentially a customer saying, I would like to check in, here's a bunch of metadata about myself, and then sending that request to a backend system, the backend system checking it and sending a response back saying, yep, you're good, you checked in, or um, this is not the correct information that we need from you, or whatever other response that they can get from that. But that request response um, pattern that we see and works so well with APIs. Um, not only having to be worried about that, but also um, developers, they'll need to uh, have to also be concerned with the touch point when someone's flight is delayed. So this, this very um, event-based interaction that we were talking about, um, the notifications um, style, where um, that flight status in the, in the backend system turns from on time to delayed, um, instead of having every system that needs to uh, ping at this and say, okay, is this flight delayed or not? Um, you just have it set up so that um, as soon as that status changes, all the listeners, whether they're passengers sitting in the terminal on their phone waiting for their flight, um, they'll get a notification. teams that are the logistical backbone of this airline, they need to be notified too. Um, the baggage delivery, the luggage delivery team needs to know you don't need to bring uh, bags there anymore because it's delayed for 24 hours or something. Um, or the food delivery team who doesn't need to bring food there anymore, the gas or the, the pilots who's flying the plane into the, the terminal. All those logistical backbone pieces um, can be listeners to this topic and get that notification that a flight's delayed. And it's really um, like business critical that this data gets to where it needs to be. And you don't have a taxing system that's constantly requesting, requesting, requesting. Um, so in a perfect world, in the world that we're imagining, um, looking forward in, in the next uh, few months here, is we have a single portal um, where a developer can log in and find both that post check-in API to kind of pull in and use in their mobile application as well as the flight delay Kafka topic. And they can reuse, they can build their new experience using these, they can contribute to the community that's built around those um, in, in the same portal site and post comments, help with documentation, like rate it, like it, um, kind of everything that goes along with our developer portal experience. They can, they can join that community and share that internally with all their other teams, or they can share it externally. And as we said, it's a new business avenue where they can monetize um, this, this feature. And when we talk about this experience, this end goal that we want to see, there are four key goals um, to achieving it. Um, and they're kind of laid out on the slide here. And, and uh, if, if you've been following through, you can see them. Um, the first one is we need all the technologies to align. So we need REST, SOAP, GraphQL, and now Async APIs and Kafka all to be supported in, in a single um, management platform um, and have those all aligned functioning a similar way. Async API makes that really easy for Kafka because it's based on um, it's based on the Open API three spec, just kind of manipulated in a couple ways to make it optimized with Kafka um, and events. Um, so it's 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 not a huge jump from what we know and love already, and it, it really helps to align these technologies. Um, so supporting that in an API management platform really brings everything into one place. Then uh, the next step is we need to be able to share these APIs. So now that you can create them and manage them. Um, and put security and all these fun things on it in the API management platform. Now we need to be able to socialize them and share them out to our internal teams in a self-service way. Um, and um, so the, yeah, the application teams can utilize those. And then next, we need a governance layer on top of that so that the applications who are subscribed to it can stay up to date on credentials for that Kafka topic. And um, they have like that kind of security backbone that we rely on and trust um, with APIs today, bringing that to um, events as well um, is critical here and, and, and a big key goal. Um, and finally, um, the, the one I love talking about, publishing this externally to for mass consumption outside of that company's DMZ and the business routes that that opens up for um, these companies where 
they never had a way to kind of monetize something like that before. Um, so I know I kind of cut it close here and only have a couple minutes for questions, but we have some really exciting new things happening um, in this space and with um, with our products here at IBM. Um, thank you really much. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, and that's all I have. So I will stop sharing and I'll take a look at the chat um, for any questions that we might have. So I don't see any questions in the chat yet. Um, Olga, I don't know if you've been monitoring any anywhere else, um, but um, if you have any questions, if you've been following along with the presentation, um, I'm happy to take the next couple of minutes here um, and answer any questions that, that you might have. So just go ahead and post them in the chat and I'll keep an eye on it. And if one comes through, I can talk through it um, and give you um, some input. Thanks for joining, Mary. Um, I, I hope you got something out of it and uh, that it was um, an interesting session for you. Thank you, Raghu. Um, I'm, I'm glad uh, it was a, an interesting discussion for you. Um, I think my email is shared in some way through this, uh, this, this tool. So if you have any follow-up questions or anyone on the call has any follow-up questions, please don't, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to um, talk through any questions you might have. Um, otherwise, if there are no other questions, I think we're, uh, we're good to go. Um, actually, I've seen a question here. Um, what advice can you give in terms of security? Um, so in terms of security, I, I guess what I can say at this point um, is that uh, we are planning to um, kind of add uh, a, a governance level um, with these um, managed event streams um, when we do, when we do um, release um, this capability later um, in our products later this year. Um, and part of that governance level is actually going to be a specific uh, like events gateway um, for building all of your kind of security uh, components to that. Um, so things similar to what we can do in with APIs today, like rate limiting and um, and throttling and, and kind of some security features like that. Um, it won't be exact apples to apples comparison that you'll see in events because obviously the technologies are slightly different and maybe a REST API um, uh, rate limit doesn't make the most sense, but um, it, it'll be similar um, levels of security, levels of governance that we'll be um, providing with events as well. But um, Mary, if you have any uh, specifics or, or feedback you want to share with me around security that you'd like kind of expect um, on events, um, I'd be very happy to talk with you more in detail on that. Okay, so I think I'll hang around for another minute or so um, if there are any follow-up questions. Um, but uh, that's that's all I had for today. Um, again, I'll just thank everyone who did join and who um, who was listening in here. Um, it was a, a fun session to give, and um, and I I think this is recorded and you'll be able to get access to it later. Um, and also that my contact information has been shared. So.